Captain Mike's Rigging Station. Powered by Florida Sport Fishing TV. Hey guys, I'm Captain Mike and welcome to my rigging station. Right here, this is where it all happens. In preparation of every episode of Florida Sport Fishing TV, we spend a tremendous amount of time down here rigging all of our rods, prepping all of our gear because you just never know what you're gonna find out there on the water. And I'll tell you what, when it comes to successful offshore fishing, Proper preparation is absolutely vital to success, regardless if you're targeting sailfish or snapper. So we've got a really cool topic in mind. We're gonna talk about offshore reef fishing for permit. Really, really cool fishery. Now, of course, everybody associates permit with flats fishing and backcountry fishing. Rightfully so. These fish thrive in the shallows and on the flats where they feed in the bottom, in the grass and in the mud for shrimp and crabs and all sorts of crustaceans and sea urchins, all kinds of stuff. But during this time of the year, in the spring, April, May, June, something very magical happens. Big numbers of giant permit in the 20 to 40 pound class, they all head offshore to the reefs outside of Marathon and the Florida Keys here to spawn. Okay, really a great opportunity for guys like me in a Mercury Power 39 foot CV, I can go target these fish that typically would require a flat skiff. So really, really special time of the year. And remember, anybody can do this, guys from bay boats and center consoles, all the way on up to sport fish boats with towers. And actually, the sport fish boats actually have an advantage because they could see the fish being perched way up in the tower. They could see big numbers and the big body of permit swarming around those reefs and the offshore wrecks. So understand, we're targeting quality size fish. They're out there spawning. They do it every year. The fishery is closed because the fish are susceptible to overfishing and we don't want to harvest them, you know, when they're spawning. As a matter of fact, all permit are worth more alive than they are dead at any time of the year. It's an incredible game fish, an incredible predator that can thrive in just a foot or two of water and a hundred feet of water. There's not many other fish that can do that. They have incredible eyesight, an absolutely incredible sense of smell, okay? Big rubbery lips, right? They're specialists at hunting for sea urchins and shellfish and shrimp. Their favorite prey is crabs, and that's what we're gonna be fishing offshore as well. Where do they congregate? Well, really just about any wreck or reef in like 80 to 120 feet of water along the Florida Keys Island chain on the offshore side, potentially will hold permit. But certain spots are just known as permit meccas. I don't know what it is about individual little spots, but whatever it is, they just hold big numbers of permit. And that's exactly where we're gonna be fishing tomorrow. In one particular area called the Seven Mile Bridge Reef Site. Listen, this isn't a secret, people. I'm not giving away secret GPS numbers. They're public numbers. Look it up. You're looking about, you know, you're talking about an area that is two acres, maybe even more, okay? It's in about 115 to 120 feet of water, a little bit shallower, a little bit deeper, depending on where you are. And like I said, big numbers of permit congregate there every spring. It's well known. So it's a great place to look for these fish and certainly a great starting point. This reef site is really awesome. It has a little bit of history to it as well. A little nostalgic, you know. Back in the early 1900s, Henry Flagler built and opened a seven mile bridge and they used to have this big swing span that opened and closed to allow ships to traverse into the bay to go through the bridge. Well, when all of that came to an end and they dismantled the bridge, they dismantled that entire swing span and 4,500 tons of steel girders and concrete were taken offshore, dumped offshore to create this artificial reef system. So you can kind of follow the food chain up, right? You've got the little tiny invertebrates and the bait fish and that leads into game fish and so on and so forth. So these artificial reef systems are vital 
to a healthy marine ecosystem here off the Florida Keys. And this one in particular is just an absolute mecca for the big numbers of permits. So that's where we're going tomorrow. Hey guys, I'm Captain Mike and welcome to my rigging station. You've asked over and over, here's the answer. Two bro fishing, four different styles of rod and reel holder mounts for every application. Their ingenious lure and leader keeper system is perfect, either permanently mounted or portable. It keeps everything I need right at my fingertips so I can focus on staying hooked up. Listen, I count on Dubro products, so should you. Check out their full line of innovative gear at DubroFishing.com. For over 80 years, Furuno Innovations have helped more fishermen find and catch more fish than any other brand. And we're raising the bar again with Navnet CZ Touch 3's new PBG and Fish It Drifted Technologies. Build your own three-dimensional shaded relief charts to find trophy fish others have missed. Perform accurate drifts the first time, every time. Be the one everyone follows. When you're serious about fishing, lead the way and get serious with Furuno. Chaos. Gear matters. Chaos Gear Matters. Shop online or visit our new superstore for everything fishing. Deep Glow outshines the competition. With a robust housing, durable glass dome, and stainless steel hardware, Deep Glow lights are the toughest, brightest, and easiest to install. Throw them in, plug them in, and let the show begin. I've literally created my own feeding frenzy. Residential or commercial, one or 50 lights, Deep Glow increases property values, creates loyal customers to waterfront businesses, and provides years of trouble-free service. Tell them Captain Mike sent you and receive a free timer. It all starts with the boat. We run a 39-foot CV powered by triple Mercury Verado 400s. Plenty of fuel, safety equipment, all of that good stuff. I don't need to tell you. You know, I'm going to tell you that every show that regardless of what boat you're in, make sure it's well-maintained and well-equipped. That's number one, okay? I can't stress that enough. My electronics, my Furuno TZ touch system, I've got the numbers already dialed in. I've got some other spots already dialed in, some waypoints. I don't want to be fumbling around. I don't want to get out there and have to worry about where I'm going and burning valuable time. Time is money on the water, not only when you're filming a show, but more importantly, you may miss that bite. So make sure that you're well prepared in advance. And I'm going to tell you, I am constantly keeping an eye on my Furuno TZ Touch Network. For me, situational awareness is vital. I'm constantly looking under the boat, seeing what, you know, not only what life I'm reading, but I'll often stumble across pieces of structure that I never even knew were there. I'm constantly looking at my chart plotter and monitoring my drift speed and drift direction so I can set up subsequent drifts in the right position. So like I said, it's just vital information. It's there, use it. Couple other things you're gonna need on the boat, a landing net. Like I said, this fishery is closed. From the top of the keys all the way down, is a special permit zone that is closed for harvest April, May, June, July. So you are not keeping any of these fish. So of course the gaff is out of the question. A nice big landing net is really going to make landing these fish and releasing them unharmed much easier, okay? You're gonna need a bait net, right? Because you're fishing crabs, which are gonna be in a live well, and certainly a bait net is gonna be very helpful. But that's really it, we're not anchoring. We're not chumming. You don't need a big cooler filled with ice because you're not keeping any of these fish. It's all about the sporting quality. That's really what this is about. And like I said, any other time of the year, we can't do this because we can't get into the shallows. And permit are such an amazing fish. They're big, they fight incredibly hard with blistering runs. They'll dig back down into the bottom and they're just glamorous. They're beautiful. Big dark eyes, silvery sides, golden belly. Just a gorgeous fish. These fish that we're targeting, you know, in that 20 to 40 pound range, they're anywhere from really 
gosh, 20 to 30 years old. This is not a fast growing fish. It's not like a dolphin or a sailfish or a wahoo that can reach those weights in one year. Okay, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a fish that needs decades, you know, 20 to 30 years to reach that trophy status. So they should be treated like royalty. So the boat's ready, we're getting ready to go here. The next thing we're gonna do is talk about where we're gonna fish. As I mentioned to you earlier, we are gonna head out and fish the Seven Mile Bridge Reef Site. Okay, that's gonna be our first go-to spot. Once I get out there, before I even wet a line, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna kinda look around, get a feel for what the current is doing, what the wind is doing, what direction we're gonna be drifting in. Uh, I certainly will use my Fish It Drift It feature on my Furuno TZ Touch 3. That's going to tell me exactly where I need to stop the boat in order to drift right over top or alongside of that reef pile, whatever it is that I would like to do. Okay, so I'm going to use that technology to my advantage. Understand also that these permit even though they relate to that structure, we're not talking about two or three fish, we're talking about a body of fish that might exceed 100, okay? I mean, a lot of fish. They're gonna be swarming around that reef. So I like to set up a grid pattern, okay? And I like to drift down one side, move over, you know, maybe 50 feet, 100 feet, another long drift, same thing, another long drift, and really just try and cross paths with them because at some point, we're gonna connect and we're gonna have our baits at the right time, at the right place, and we're gonna get tight. That's a promise. So we'll get out there, you know, like I said, we'll determine exactly what direction everything is moving in, and that's what you need to do too. And this, you know, relates not only for this fishery, but all fisheries. Don't be in such a rush. Slow it down a little bit, okay? Slow it down. Think about what you're doing, you know, and approach each fishery scientifically and methodically so you can maximize on every opportunity. Now also understand, like with most episodes of Florida Sport Fishing TV, we've got a plan A, a plan B, a plan C in mind, and we'll talk about a lot of different gear and a lot of different tackle because you never know what you might find out there. This is going to be the exception because we've got one goal in mind, very narrow-minded here. We're going permit fishing on the reefs. That's what we're doing. And I want to focus all of my efforts on these permits. So truthfully, even if we see something floating with some schooly dolphin, I don't really care about that. You know, I'm not looking to catch anything on the bottom as far as snappers, groupers. You know, there are other days and other trips for that. This is all about the permit. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We talked a lot about tackle, a lot about finding these fish, staying on them. Got it. All right, all right. Nice job. What a fish. Oh, yeah, that's a fat one right there. That's what we want. Oh, nice one. Look at that one. Got it. Nice. That's a tuna. That's what it's all about. Right there. Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about. Just real. Just real. All right, come on, come on. Somebody get in there. Get in there. Crank, 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 crank. Got him. Got him. Got him. We got him. We got him. We got him. Got him. Get him in the boat. Ready? Oh. Jeopardize to your ride. Never jeopardize losing a ride. Ever.
bait. Let's talk about that. Permit are incredible predators. They'll feed off the bottom, they'll feed throughout the water column, they'll eat all sorts of crustaceans, as I mentioned, sea urchins, shellfish, you know, clams, crabs, shrimp, it all makes up their diet, even small fin fish. They'll eat those as well, but nothing beats the crab, the small crabs, the little silver dollar size blue crabs or past crabs, they'll both work. Contact in advance your local tackle shop to see if they have live crabs. Because a lot of times when this permit fishing heats up and this bite heats up, the crabs are nowhere to be found because they're just sold out everywhere. So don't be under the assumption that your local tackle shop is gonna have a full inventory of live crabs, they may not. So again, just do some research in advance to make sure that you can get your hands on some crabs. I can't stress enough too, get enough of them because if you're going to be out there all day permit fishing you're going to need i don't know four to eight dozen crabs you know 50 to 100 crabs to keep you busy all day those permit are not dumb and they didn't get big by being dumb they don't want a stinky dead crab okay they want something that's alive frisky really healthy so every single time i bring that jig up i'm generally putting a brand new crab on every single time because I really want to maximize my odds and understand when this fishing heats up when the sun the moon the stars align you could expect a dozen to 15 bites a day sometimes even more okay so you're gonna blow through the baits a lot so make sure that you're well equipped so there's gonna be two of us fishing on the boat and we're gonna try and fish four rods that's gonna be the ideal is fish four rods we're gonna start with a couple of dead sticks reach up here let's talk about the tackle listen we fish conventional rods all of the time when we're fishing for groupers when we're fishing for mutton snappers when we're jigging when we're trolling we're always fishing conventional outfits so it's nice to switch it up and enjoy a fishery that's all about spinners so I really prefer the spinning outfits when we're targeting these permit on these offshore reef systems Okay. It all starts with a Chaos Gold seven foot spinning outfit rated for 15 to 30 pound line. This is an incredibly versatile rod. We fish it for everything from snook to sailfish. It's matched to a Shimano Saragossa 10,000, absolute workhorse from Shimano. Two vital elements to this reel, plenty of line capacity, silky smooth drag. Both are vital. Big permit in the 20 to 40 pound class will go on blistering runs. They'll dig back down toward the bottom. If you have a sticky drag, you're gonna pop them off and break them off. So make sure that you really have a quality spinning reel. The reel is loaded with 30 pound diamond braid. We don't wanna go much lighter than that because again, these fish are spawning. We wanna fight them, we wanna enjoy the fight, but we wanna release them unharmed. Plus the longer that fish is in the water, the greater the odds of a shark, you know, uh, getting his fair share as well. The end of the braid, we tie the end of the braid to 25 feet, 25 feet of diamond presentation, 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. This is really, really important because the permit have incredible eyesight. So we want to be as stealthy as possible and the clear presentation fluorocarbon is nearly invisible in the water column. We tie that fluorocarbon to the braid with an Alberto knot. Very small, very streamlined, no additional hardware, no swivels, nothing that can fail. At the end of that leader material is perhaps the most important element of the entire equation, and that's a jig head, okay? A typical jig head. Very, very easy to get your hands on these jig heads at your local tackle shop, and they're exactly what you need for successful permit fishing. Variety of different sizes, quarter ounce, three eighths, half, three quarters of an ounce, and one ounce, okay? What's real important about these jig heads is not only the weight of the jig, but also the hook size. You know, here's an example. There's a three quarter ounce jig. Here's a like a three eighths. Look at the difference in the hook size. I don't know if I want to be battling a 40 pound permit on anything smaller than that. That's really about the smallest hook that I really want to battle these big fish on. And I prefer that hook size. So 
Our first rods that we set out, you know, remember, there's gonna be two of us, so we're gonna bring a pair of these outfits. And while I'm usually guilty of bringing way too much tackle and way too many rods on the boat, in this particular case, we're gonna limit it because again, we're just really zeroed in on those permit, and that's all that we really wanna do. So there'll be two of us on the boat. We're each going to dead stick one of these outfits with a three quarter or one ounce jig head, depending on the current, depending on how fast the boat is drifting, which of course the conditions are gonna dictate that. We'll chuck this out and fish a crab on or near the bottom on this heavier three quarter or one ounce jig head. The rod is locked up. It's fished out of a rod holder, one way up in the bow, one in the stern. The rod bends over, you're tight, you're hooked up. Fight the fish, it's that simple. Understand that these jig heads come in really three different predominant colors. The chartreuse, the bright pink, and the white, okay? They all work. A lot of guys swear, especially the local charter boat captains, that when it comes to the permit, that's the color that you want right there, is that hot pink. They swear that that hot pink just does something magic to the permit. Truthfully, I've caught them on all of the colors. I don't see a benefit to one over the other, so that's really up to you. Fresh bait is vital in today's highly pressured fisheries, and no one makes it easier to catch live bait than the Bally Hoop. With a complete line of collapsible hoop nets and accessories, the Bally Hoop is a must-have for every angler. Simply deploy the Bally Hoop and watch the magic. With the Bally Hoop, catching live bait is clean, fast, and simple. Ask for the Bally Hoop at your local tackle shop or visit us online to find a dealer near you. Dependable Terminal Tackle, it's vital in every venue. That's why professional anglers targeting bonefish to blue marlin rely on diamond fishing products. With an extensive selection of the finest monofilaments, fluorocarbon, and braided fishing line in the world, it's time you avoid the rest and rig with the best. Diamond Fishing Products, the official line of Florida Sport Fishing TV, tournament winning fishing teams, and busy charter captains from coast to coast. Once we set our deeper rods here, we're then going to each fish an additional rod right under our arm. So again, we've got two of these on the boat. That's only two outfits so far. We're now gonna downsize a little bit. Let me come back here and grab a couple of lighter outfits, six foot six. And truth is, this is a high speed vertical jigging rod from Chaos. That's what this rod was designed for. But so what? You can use it in any venue, and it just makes a perfect rod for the permit fishing under your arm as well. A little bit shorter, a little bit lighter. Uh, it's almost like a little stand-up rod, just really ideal. Perfect guides for the braid as well. It's matched to a Shimano Twin Power 8000. Let me tell you something. You've heard about the Stella. Well, let me introduce you to the Twin Power. This is perhaps an even better reel than the Stella. Absolutely incredible. This is Shimano's top tier spinning reel. Plenty of line capacity, incredibly smooth, but a tremendous amount of power. Same thing, loaded with 30 pound braid, tied to 25 feet of the 30 pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon. And I wanna mention, by the way, always in almost every scenario, if we're fishing 30, look, I'm also gonna have a spool of 40 on the boat. I'm also gonna have a spool of 20 pound on the boat because you just never know what might happen. You never know what you're gonna find out there. And if that bite is really hot and heavy and those fish are on the larger size of the spectrum, I might bump it up to 40 so I can fight them with a little bit more heat and land them a little bit quicker. On the other hand, if those fish are more in the 10 to 20 pound range on the smaller size and they're being really finicky because that water is crystal, crystal clear, I may downsize to 20, but I don't like to because like I said, I wanna land the fish as quickly as I can. Once our deep rods are set, we're each gonna grab a different spinner, a lighter spinner outfit here. Again, the same crab. We've gone to a smaller jig, the 3 8 the one I mentioned to you that I'm never gonna fish smaller than that, okay? So that's about the lightest. And we're gonna feed that crab through the water column. So we're actively each fishing two rods. Two of us on the boat, four crabs in the water, we're maximizing our opportunities. 
Two of them are going to be on or near the bottom where the permit schools often roam. And then the additional crabs are going to be feeding through the water column. Okay, so they descend through the water column. And at some point, we'll have our crabs at the right time, at the right place, and we'll get tight. Fish eats the bait, they don't nibble. These permit will just inhale that crab, just whoosh, inhale that crab. Line's gonna come screaming off your reel, lock it up. You don't have to set the hook, they've got really rubbery lips. They're gonna hook themselves and then just fight the fish from there. But expect a drawn out battle, because let me tell you something, these permit are strong. But that's it. Those are the two rigs that we're fishing. Don't make it complicated. Don't use all sorts of terminal tackle and all sorts of junk that could potentially fail. Keep it simple. Jigs in a variety of different sizes based on the conditions, based on the depth, the speed of the current, where you want to present that bait in the water column, and have some 5-0 circle hooks as well, because sometimes you will need to go as stealthy as possible. Do everything you can do to eliminate angler failure and tackle failure from the equation. Slow it down, enjoy the fight, but relax. Don't make any silly mistakes that are gonna cost you a trophy fish, okay? Follow all of these rules, rig right, and I'm telling you, you're gonna stay tight. Connect with the crew on Instagram at Florida Sport Fishing TV. Catch our extreme seminar series at www.fsftv.com and get hooked up.